Because of that, they are not able to restore that uh, differential badger. To avoid that, even though, even though if there are any ad hoc badges performed, it, you need to make sure that your regular backup should not uh, break. So for that, whatever ad hoc okay. backup that we are taking, you can go for copy on the backup. It will not disturb regular uh, differential based LSA. So even though after taking the copy on the ad hoc backup, if you issue a differential backup command, it will take changes from last regular uh, scheduled full backup to till now. It will, it will take the backup of all those changes from Sunday full backup to till now. With respect to oh, okay, what okay. the ad hoc backup that we have taken. Okay. And what about the log backup? You said you have log backup to take one hour. Yeah. Log backup is a kind of a uh, take backup of uh, all the transactions available in the log. No, we will we'll just impart the log backup as well. That's what my question is. Okay. Um, the full backup. You said I don't take an, you know, I'm taking an ad full backup. Not have, it, will not any, it will not have any impact on log backup. Okay. So I that you mean so even though when you get an error that you are not able to restore the differential data, yeah. on top of that I can use all my log backups and bring the database to point time? Yes, we can. So not not okay. yeah, taking the same example that you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can yeah. Have you tried this? No. <laughs> I think it's not good. Yeah, it's a good example. It's a good example. Yeah. Sunday full backup. Mm -hmm. I'll try this. I'll try this log backup. But definitely it will not work for different. I'll try it for log backup. I'll check it out. Uh -huh. Okay. So what what do you have to do? Will it work for log backup? Will it not work? I think it should work. Uh -huh. Because, uh, because the whatever the full backup. Uh, uh, so anyway, as we have log backup, full backup doesn't truncate any uh, log uh, log file. So the log backup will still have the regular LSN chain. So with that uh, concept, okay. I don't think that it should work. But putting the copy only, yeah. will there be any impact? That that I'm not sure on the log backup. But in general, okay. so if you have a two two full backups, one on one on Sunday and one on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. Without that Wednesday full backup, you can restore Sunday full backup and all the log backups from there you can restore one by one. It will work. Okay. Okay. So now tell me, like uh, you said you have to work with log shipping. Yes. Now what, what exactly is the purpose of log shipping? Like, you know, is it for high availability or users of the yard? How does it work? It's for the yard. It's for the yard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, as a, like a warm standby because it can uh, the second we cannot be like uh, as it is or in sync with the primary. So depending on our job, uh -huh. the schedule, there may be later okay. from your primary. So about 30 minutes or 20, 30 minutes behind from primary. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now when you say warm standby, like you mean you'll be able to carry the data, right? Yeah, we can we can have it in the uh, standby mode and we can get the database and read only. Okay, time. so in that case, what happens to the you know kind of uncommitted transactions? So uncommitted transactions will be moved to the top file. So uh -huh. so if the transaction undo file, it will be created uh, uh, when we have uh, uh, log shipping secondary database in standby mode. Uh, so it will store all uncommitted transactions whenever. The, if the transaction is successfully committed, then the the uh -huh. file will be automatically cleared out so because data will be sent in both the sides. Yeah. Now, okay, you need to say that uh, so the locks will be applied, but I'm not able to see the uncommitted transaction. Is that true? So the uh -huh. locks will be applied with such a date, yeah. but I'm not able to see the uncommitted transaction. Is it? Uncommitted transactions in the sense, say for example, I have um, I have a transaction as in progress at primary, and by the time the uh -huh. transaction is completed, so I have a multiple uh -huh. uh, transaction log backup as performed as part of log shipping. So between whatever okay. those uncommitted transactions will be stored in the top file, and uh, we can see that in the we can see that data in secondary database. If something goes okay. wrong, with, wrong with the transaction at primary end, then uh, with, with reference, by taking reference of uh, top file, those transactions will be rolled back 
are in the secondary data bank also to maintain consistency on the two partners. Okay. So you uh, have you worked in Merlin as well? Yes. Merlin and application both? Yeah. Transaction replication. In, in replication. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any issues that you face with in terms of replication? Do you get any major issues that you face on them? Yeah, in in replication, mostly uh, most common things are like as as I mentioned, we have a transaction replication. We get uh, this uh -huh. privacy violations uh, and do not found errors because the subscribers are uh, at subscriber call. Subscribers are also people will be accessing those tables and transactions will be running. So. So by the time uh, I'm injecting some picture at primary at uh, publisher side, by the time that uh, command is replicated to second uh, subscriber, if someone else has uh -huh. someone else has been injected the same picture at subscriber, so so we get uh, primary key violation issue. So we need to identify the target table where that uh, issue, where that um, error is arised, and we can get into that table and we can remove that duplicate record. Or else. Uh, Whatever the record that you are updating, if the same record is not available at the uh, target table in the subscriber, so there we get row not found uh -huh. error. So in that case, we need to okay. identify that uh, target object and we need to insert the corresponding record so that we go so, and then uh, the replication will start working fine. Okay. 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 So let's say you get a case where the application team comes and tells you that the server performance is very bad. You know, your CPU is spiking, your memory is spiking, yeah. and the usage is spiking, and you know they feel that it's no Yeah. How would you approach this? Yeah, definitely we start looking at what exactly is running at that point of time in the system. On the VC, are there any blocks in suffering? So we then expand it to or expand it to the two. At this point, DM underscore VC key request where blocking underscore session underscore ID not equal to zero. With that, we come to know if there are any blocking occurring in the system at that point of time. So when you get up, when mm -hmm. you see any blocking are occurring, so by taking mm -hmm. that speed and we can give it to the DNS input buffer, or we can give it to the system mm -hmm. processes. So, so with that, we get to know more granular information like what process is running, what code behind that which is uh, uh, running, and who is the owner mm -hmm. and from who is supposed to be being executed. So once we get to know all uh -huh. the details, we can go ahead and talk to concerned application team, and we can uh, fill the transaction. And also another thing is we do uh, so whenever we get such uh, requests, and we enable red flags, and we do see are there any dead loss, dead loss, sorry, dead loss are occurring. We enable one triple two and one two zero four, and we trace appropriate messages to error loss. As uh, still, uh -huh. if we don't get anything, and we enable, uh, we get. Uh, so whatever the long running query what that identifies mm -hmm. in the production, we get that to the dev environment. We run the profiler and we do see uh, what piece of code is uh, uh, taking more time and taking some more reads, uh, giving more reads or uh, consuming more CPU. And depending on that, mm -hmm. uh, we if required uh, whatever the trace outcome, trace output that we get from profiler, we give it to the uh, DTA. And we try to see what recommendations comes out of GTA. If there are any indexes mm -hmm. that needs to be designed, we go ahead and implement those in required indexes in the dev environment. And once we see okay. appropriate performance improvement, then we move those indexes to production. So apart from that, if it is nothing to do with the indexes or uh, uh, anything at server level, it's just the pure code base. Then we work with our mm -hmm. developers. In some cases, what happens? Developers uh, write their uh, uh, giants like um, giant and giant, like they, they continuously write giants in 20 different mm -hmm. tables in a single giant. So, if we find any such things, we recommend them to break it into the small pieces and put the results into a temporary table and write one common giant in the end and design whatever the required indexes on that temporary table, one common temporary table. and. That's how we give all our recommendations in case if they are using any cursors. We recommend them not to go with the cursors and use tables and values. So we give our recommendations and we work, we work uh, together uh, to make that stored procedure is optimized.
Okay, so you first thing is, like you said, you look for blocking. Yeah. Assume there are no blocks. Okay. Right. Then what will you do? So then we do check um, a fragmentation. So fragmentation, um, if there are... A, fragmentation uh, of, how how would you identify the tables to check for fragmentation? I mean, you check for the whole data, the entire data is? No, we... Uh, so whatever the first we identify the query, so so whatever the long running transaction. So when you run this is open run, you get to know what transaction is running, and we identify the the source processor or code behind that scene, and from that code we can come to know what are the tables.